you do not want to miss this race today. It really does have it all. Drama, despair, jewels, and a last lap showdown that I'm still recovering from. It's a Seto Corsa Competizione for the latest round of the Coach Dave GT3 Sprint with Low Fuel Motorsport. And for once, I'm in with a great chance of getting a good result. I've qualified strongly, and I'll be starting from P5 with a time of 134.9. It's the furthest up the grid I've been for a long, long time in LFM, but can I make it count? Let's head to Alton Park and find out. Here we go then, we're underway and Kimo Bjorn in the McLaren has got a much better getaway, he's already moved into P5, we've got cars on our outside so we're going to have to hold it tight through T1 and as a result we lose two more positions, Joris Verstegen in front of us just about hanging on to it there. Oh, there's a bit of contact from behind and we've been torpedoed into the barrier approaching Cascades, oh no! Well, I said my grid position gave me the best chance I've had in a long, long time to get a good result here, but that has been undone spectacularly in the space of two corners. We rejoin in dead last position. Let's go back and check out a replay to see what went so disastrously wrong at the start of this race. Now, I knew I'd have to keep it tight going into T1. I've already lost one position to Kimo Bjorn, and two more cars are going to roll it around the outside. Ruslan Busarov and Joris Verstegen both get him by with the wider line. Well, the danger is going to come from behind and it's the black Ferrari of Rich Page just having a look up my inside. I don't leave him enough room. He rides off the curb and that's what causes the contact on board with Page. And watch for Stegen around the outside in the Audi. He clips the gravel. He's so lucky to save that. Meanwhile, Page spots a gap to my right. He goes for it, but I don't really leave him enough room. I squeeze him out onto the curb. That's what causes the contact. We're both out into the gravel. Page rejoins well down the order. I rejoin in dead last. What a disastrous start to this race. One final look from the chopper cam. And watch my line. I'm a little bit careless here because I do open up a gap and then I close it again. If I'd just been a bit more aware that Paige was on my outside, I could have stayed over to the inside and we would have got through safely. So yeah, I've got to hold my hands up to that one. I brought that on myself. So my very real hopes of a top five finish at Alton Park have evaporated. From here on in, it is a damage limitation job. What can we do to salvage something from this race? We're in 18th position. We will get one freebie back straight away because that is Joris Verstegen in the Audi who's crashed out. So we're up to P17 now. Well, there's still a lot of work to be done. There are three Ferraris ahead, the closest of which is David Bruno, but he's still one and a half seconds down the road. So my immediate goal is to try and reel in this trio of Ferraris, but I've got to be mindful of the damage I picked up in that shunt at Cascades. I hit the barrier pretty hard. However, we are visibly getting closer to Bruno now, helped by the fact that he completely missed the apex into the final corner. The yellow flags are out too. Has there been an incident at T1? Will there be more freebies up for grabs? Yes, there will. Two cars out to the left on the grass, both rejoining, but we've got past them. We're up into P15 now and applying all sorts of pressure onto the rear end of Bruno. If I can just keep my cool, get my head down and start working, I don't see why I can't fight my way back into the top 10 here. There's still more than 20 minutes of the race to go and I know that I'm quicker than all these guys further down the field. And the two drivers directly behind me in 16th and 17th now are Arnold Blackbird and Christian De La Tour. They were the pair having a dust up in T1 at the start of lap 2, but crucially, they're two of the front runners. De La Tour started from P2, Blackbird started from P3. How frustrating is that? Just imagine if I'd held on to that P5 at the start. I could have been battling for a podium now. Instead, I find myself on the fringes of the top 15. But I can't let myself get disappointed with that now. What's done is done. I've got a race to focus on and I've got to concentrate on closing down David Bruno in 14th and Tino Wagner in 13th. We're up over Clay Hill for the second time then. It's just 0.3 of a second now to Bruno, so we've reeled him in. But the big question is, can we get past him? There's a very narrow track, Alton, for these GT3 cars. He's wide, so there may be a gap on the inside. Oh, the Wagner's lost it. Oh, no, for the second time in two laps, we find ourselves into the barrier hard. And that light front damage from the first lap crash has now been upgraded to severe damage. Do you get the impression that it might not be my day today? So yeah, for the second time in two laps, I find myself rejoining at the very back of the pack. But before that, we did pick up a couple of freebies. Let's start by watching the number two Audi of Joris Verstegen. Now there is a big bump on the curb exiting this chicane and Verstegen found it. Look at that. 
Absolutely no chance of saving that one. So that promoted me up into P17. And then at the start of lap two, there was a big incident at T1. That is Christian Delator steaming in and taking Arnold Plattbird with him there. On board with Delator. He must have missed his breaking point because he comes into T1 way too hot. He is never going to get that stopped. And that is P2 and P3 out of the race. And as I said on commentary, how frustrating. If only I'd survived lap one, I could well have found myself in one of the podium positions now. Instead, I'm down in P15, but only temporarily. Tino Wagner losing it in Druids. He slides right across track. David Bruno is able to react and avoid it, but I was blindsided. I couldn't see it until it was too late. On board with me now. And I couldn't even see Wagner at this point. I thought they just both missed the apex. Unfortunately, as I go for the inside, Wagner is sliding right across path and there's nothing I can do. So for the second time this race, I find myself in dead last, 18th out of 18th, and around six seconds behind anyone else on track. I'm going to have to rely on freebies to get back into this one, and I get a really bizarre one almost straight away. This is the BMW of Ruslan Busarov, who decides just to accelerate straight across Britain's chicane and hammer the barrier. So he's parked up on the outside. By the time I arrive, I still get the yellow flag warning that Busarov isn't rejoining. So I am going to get my first freebie position back as we come up over the brow of the hill look to the right there's booster off we're up into p17 however i'm still more than five seconds behind p16 so we're going to fast forward now to the start of lap four another freebie up for grabs look at the cloud of dust to the right that is tino wagner and he has made a right mess of island bend he was way out onto the grass there and into the barrier so that promoted us up into p16 we're returning to the live action now at the start of lap five where i've managed to close the gap to the cars in front i'm now just pulling five of a second behind Arnold Blackburn. So I am closing in on him fast. I've just picked up my first track cut warning for drifting a touch wide exiting T1 there, but I won't worry about that right now because we are right on the tail of Blackbird's McLaren. Just put one of a second and we may be in a position to challenge up the inside into Island Bend. We're going to have to be brave if we do it. I do think twice about it. It's so difficult to go through that turn too wide. So I do back out of it, but we're in a good position now. We're challenging Blackbird. Meanwhile, in front, Massimo Morass really wide around the hairpin there. And because of that mistake, we now find 14th to 16th separated by less than a second. So it hasn't taken us long to get involved in a battle here. And I do feel I've got a lot more pace up my sleeve than Blackbird ahead. Now, I suspect Blackbird must have picked up even more damage than me in that turn one incident at the start of lap two because he is third on the grid after qualifying. He was about four tenths quicker than I was. Well, he's certainly not four tenths quicker than me now. So maybe I'll be able to capitalize on that damage McLaren. We will see. For now, though, the yellow flag's right there. There's another car parked on the grass. That was August Jensen in the Mercedes. So we are now into the top 15. And as we approach Druid's corner, we may be up into P14 because Morass has run really wide. He's out onto the grass. We pull over to the right to allow him the space to rejoin, but we're past. We're up into 14th position. Into Lodge Corner then, the final turn of this fifth lap. Look at the rearview mirror. We've lost Morass for a second time, so we're under no pressure behind now. Right, let's take a breather from the live action and remind ourselves of what went down on those previous couple of laps, starting with this mistake from Tino Wagner, getting Iden Bend all wrong. He's way out onto the grass there and into the barrier. Now, remember that bump on the curb exit in his lob chicane? Well, it's claimed another victim. This is August Jensen in the Mercedes. He hits it right there. It sends him careering off onto the grass. He does really well to avoid the barrier, but he can't save it. So that promoted me back into the top 15. At the very next corner, it became P14. Massimo Moras getting out onto the grass and surrendering two positions. Back to the live action then at the end of lap six. It's now three and a half seconds back to Morass in 15th. So there's no pressure at all behind. I'm still concentrating on chasing down Blackbird. Now I know I'm faster than him, but I just can't find a way through. Now I know his McLaren is damaged. I know my BMW is damaged. So rather than trying to risk it all and forcing a way past, I'm just going to try and apply as much pressure as I possibly can. Maybe, just maybe, we can force him into a mistake. He's a little bit wide through Cascades there. That is going to give us a run on him. Now, I'm not quick enough to tuck it up the inside into Island Bend, but I may be able to spook him if I just feign a move. It might have worked. Blackbird moves over to the inside to block the move, but it's cost him on exit. He's out onto the grass. Oh, he's lost it completely. 
So yeah, by applying some extra pressure, we forced him into a mistake. Now, it's not the most satisfying way to make a pass. It would have been much better to do a nice clean overtake, but needs must at this stage of the race. So we're up into P13. Yellow flags are out. That's going to be P12 now because John Rohrer in the Lamborghini is over on the grass to the left. Right, here's another look at that pass on Blackbird. I moved to the left with absolutely no intention of trying to make a move. I just wanted to spook the McLaren driver and it worked. He misses the apex out onto the grass and unfortunately he spins out and clips the barrier. Now uh, within moments of picking up that P13, it suddenly became P12 because we lost John Rohr in the Lamborghini. He gets Britons all wrong, he clips the kerb, can't save it and slides into the barrier. We're fast forwarding now to lap 9 and all of a sudden I'm wondering if I may have a shot at a top 10 after all. Unthinkable a few laps ago but we have closed right in on the battle for 10th place. When John Rohr in the Lamborghini crashed out here at Britain's a couple of laps ago I was nearly 3 seconds behind this fight but now I find myself right on the tail of Julian Pico. And the fact we've got more than 10 minutes of this race left suggests that we can challenge for a top 10 here into his lops. Oh, Pico's missed his breaking point. Pico has gone. Now we've got to be careful. Where's he going to rejoin? Oh, right in front of David Bruno. Bruno has to get on the brakes hard. There's a gap up the inside. We can capitalise. We move into 11th. Oh, I feel really sorry for David Bruno. There's nothing he could do. And you really hope that Pico would give that position back. That is not how you want to make an overtake. He completely bypassed past his lob chicane and then rejoin in front of Bruno. Oh, I almost felt bad for passing Bruno, but we've got to be ruthless at this stage of the race. We're right on the tail of Pico. Now there's a gap up the inside into Lock's corner. We may be able to get another position here and we have found our way into the top 10. Incredible stuff. Yeah, here's another look at the controversial overtake. Pico in the black McLaren completely missing his breaking point. He's out onto the grass and bypassing the chicane, but he rejoins right in front of Bruno. Bruno has no choice but to get on the brakes hard, and that leaves him open to an attack from me. On board with Bruno now. And to be fair to Pico, he doesn't go back to the apex. He leaves a big gap on the inside. He was probably allowing that space for Bruno to get through, but unfortunately we were just all too close together. However, at the final turn, launch corner, he leaves another gap and I certainly didn't need a second invitation to take that one. We're into the top 10. Now, perhaps the only thing more surprising than finding myself in the top 10 was the fact that I'm driving a very beaten up BMW and I've not yet made a mistake. However, I wouldn't have to wait too long. We're now on lap 11. We're into Island Bend and I'm just running out a bit wide. I've got two tyres on the grass. This could be catastrophe. I've got to do everything I can to save it and not run onto the grass on the outside. We've just about held onto it, but at a cost, it's left a huge gap up the inside. And August Jensen in the Mercedes takes full advantage. He He's up to 10th, we're demoted down to 11th. Leaping forward now to the end of lap 11. I'm struggling to keep up with Jensen. However, the pack in front of him are beginning to get their elbows out. There's a red Lamborghini out onto the grass, climbing up over Deer Lee. That's Paul Dunumpty. Now both the Stegen and Jensen have managed to get around him. I'm not going to be able to, but I have closed right in. So all of a sudden, the pack has bunched really tightly together. We're still down in P11, but we can see P7 within a couple of seconds, so anything can happen over the final six minutes of this race. I've just got to stay in contention here, tag onto the end of this pack, and we will see what happens. We could still yet get a top 10. When we're approaching my strongest part of the circuit, I feel really confident through this section, both on the brakes into the hairpin and exiting it, and you can see we get visibly closer to the rear of that Lamborghini. So we've got Yoris Verstegen desperately trying to cling on to that 8th position under pressure from August Jensen. Then we've got Paul Dunumpty and me right behind, waiting to pounce if anything goes wrong. Out of Britain's, there's an opportunity! Dunumpty just had to tap the brakes, he got a little bit too close to Jensen. That's allowed me to challenge around the outside, I'm going to have to try and hold firm through his ease. This is going to be really tough. We're too wide, I've got to leave the space to my right and we've managed it. We've got the position, we're into the top 10. And we get past an empty. Wow, that was intense. It wouldn't be my preferred part of the track to make an overtake, and particularly to go through too wide. But you've got to take these opportunities when they present themselves, and there might be another one in front because Joris Verstegen has made a mess of drills. We're now into ninth. 
Oh, I've got to see this one again. Now watch Paul Denamte in the red and white Lamborghini. He's just going to damp the brakes here when he gets a bit close to that Mercedes in front. That gives me the opportunity I need. Now I'd rather be on the other side, if I'm honest. I'm going to have the outside entry into his lob chicane. So the only thing I can do is leave space on the inside and hold firm. Actually, Denamte takes to the grass there. Maybe he was a little bit concerned about going in too wide. So that puts us back into the top 10. And then at the very next corner, Druids, we're going to pick up another position. Joris Verstegen just running it in a bit too hot. Gets out onto the grass and surrenders his advantage. And we know how tricky it is to get back on track over these bumps. The Audi is going to hit another one. And Verstegen is gone. Now that overtake on Denopti a couple of laps ago is going to provide me with some proper practice for when exactly the same opportunity presents itself on lap 14. At the moment, I'm just over a second behind August Jensen, but I'm going to close right in through Britons as Jensen gets a little bit too close to Richard Guzman in seventh. And as a result, exactly the same gap opens up. We're going to pull alongside Jensen. We're side by side coming down the hill. Now, once again, I've got to hold the outside line into his lots. Can we hold fair for a second time? take another position we're still too wide Jensen's not giving this one up this is going to be a really tricky exit we've got to avoid the bump on the curb and unfortunately we just can't get the job done Jensen holds on well we pulled it off once and we certainly worth a second attempt but Jensen proven a much tougher nut to crack in that Mercedes so we're going to have to find another way if we're going to get that eighth position time isn't on our side now we've got just two minutes of the race left so probably this lap and one more after it we could be shaping up for a thrilling conclusion to this race. I never thought I'd be challenging for P8 after that disastrous first five minutes. But let's go back and take another look at this battle through his lop chicane. Now, it really does take two to tango if you're going to go through this entire section too wide without the slightest bit of contact. But that's exactly what we both did. Fair play to Jensen there. Okay, the leader is on the final lap now. Give it to him, Ken. Well, you've just heard the announcement from Chris. Chief, the leader is on the final lap, so we are only going to have one more lap after this one. Can I close back in on these two cars in front? Well, I'm going to make the mistake I didn't want to make. I'm going to hit that bump. Thankfully, I hold on to it, but it has cost me a great deal of time. We're going to fast forward to the final lap. Can I do anything about this now? I'm still one second behind Jensen, who is locked in a real battle with Guzman. Now, on a normal lap, there's no way I can close in 1.3 seconds over half a lap. However, these two are fighting so closely together, they may slow each other down. And that's exactly what is happening all of a sudden with just 0.4 of a second off Jensen. Uh, the checker flag is out for the leader. So this now is the final sprint to the line. Can we do anything about Jensen in front? Can we find a way into eighth position? Oh, Jensen sideways. He just clipped the curb on the outside. This is an opportunity. We're going to be too wide going up over Clay Hill. I'm going to be on the outside. I don't think there's a way through here. There's no way I can get the pass done on the outside into Druid. So we have to lift, but we may be able to switch back and try and force my way up the inside. I have to take a bit of the curb because there was and really a car's win there. It's do or die now. We've got one corner to go. We're going to go for it up the inside. I've got to hold it tight. I've got to leave him space on the outside. I don't want to run him out onto the grass. We have made the pass, but was that a little bit too rough? I'll take the check and flag in eighth position, but yeah, I may have been a little bit too aggressive there. We'll have to check out the replay. It all started when Jensen made this mistake exiting his lobs. He almost loses the rear. It's costing all his momentum going up over Clay Hill. I've only got one place to challenge and that is up the inside which is going to give me the outside for Druids. I knew there was no way I'd make a pass there so I try the later entry, try the switch back to tuck it up the inside. At this point I know I've got one chance and one chance only to make the overtake and it's in to the final turn. Now I do come from quite a long way back here and it's imperative that I hold a tight line. It does look like I left more than a car's width on the outside but there must have been contact that sent Jensen out onto the grass. Let's watch it on board with me yeah it's a late lunge although i do keep it tight i don't keep it tight enough i should have been hugging the curb on the inside there i didn't do that that forces me out into the middle of the track and it nudges jensen out onto the grass the chopper cam will give us the best possible view of it now i knew i was going to be on the limit as soon as i committed to making that pass but it turns out 
I may have been just beyond the limit. So the first thing I did after this race was send an apology to Jensen. It was a bit too aggressive, that move, and I'm not particularly proud of it. Here are the classified results, though. We do get P8, but it's probably a tainted P8. Unfortunately, Jensen dropped two positions as a result of that move at the final corner. As for fastest laps, well, my 136.1 was well off the pace, but that's probably due to the damage that I picked up on the opening two laps. I was a good 1.2 seconds slower than my qualifying here. All in all, this was a battle.